Hello, I'm Sean Richards of Not a Yes Man's Economics. What I want to talk about today is inflation and the impact of that. The special relevance is the numbers that we've seen out of China this week. Why is this in play? Well, if we step back, there's a couple of ways of looking at this. The first is, of course, we're now trying to find out the economic impact of the post-COVID-19 outbreak. At least we're hoping the outbreak's mostly over. But then this raises questions about inflation and how that's measured. If we look at the numbers from China, then it's being reported that it's good news that we're seeing some more inflation. But there are a lot of nuances to that. And then there's always the catch to this sort of thing that who actually wants to pay more for things, which gets ignored. Producers, of course, want you to pay more. But who actually wants to pay more? If we switch to the numbers that we've seen out of China, there's a particular issue with them. Essentially, the inflation in China at the minute is food price inflation. So an inflation rate of 2.7% is, if you look at the food price sector, that gives you an inflation rate of 2.7%. There's a subplot to that, which is pork prices, I'll come to in a minute. But you see, this is an awkward area when we look at how central banks deal with this sort of thing, because they ignore what they call non-core products, or they try to. And here, there's a bit of a swerve, and I realise it's a bit uncomfortable, but the reality is things like food and energy are non-core to them. A bit silly. Returning now to the issue of how we've got here, before the coronavirus times, people were worried about African swine fever in the pig, hog, if you want to call it that, herds in China. And this has been an ongoing issue that saw pork prices surge. This matters, why? Well, pork is a particular staple product there, but it also matters because of the size of price rises we've seen. For example, for the July figures, it was up over 10% on a monthly basis, 10.3%, and the annual rise was 85%. And this continues a picture that we've seen for a while now. If we switch to implications of this, they're importing quite a lot of pork from abroad. So happens that numbers from Argentina recently were up quite a lot. Welcome for Argentina in hard times, needs the business. But we see that the heat is on, so to speak, for the issues in China. Chinese consumers and workers, even though central bankers might say this is non-core, will be paying a lot more for pork if they buy it. And that is a problem. Other food prices have risen too, vegetables and so on. Now, as is the way of things, not everything's risen. Some things like egg prices have fallen on the year. But there is an issue here for the ordinary person who finds that something that they want to buy, pork, is suddenly a lot more expensive. So that gives a very different picture to those that broadly welcome high inflation in China as a way of things being more stable. And if we look at it more subtly here, we get something that you always see, really. People grandly say that inflation is 2%, and that's good. For example, in the West, that's mostly the inflation target. But is it? Because if it's on things that people really need and then have to buy, then it's not. There was a famous case in New York where a member of the Federal Reserve was told by a person that they couldn't eat an iPad. And that's the issue here. Thank you.